Well, hello everyone. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. I'm making a video today for a machine that I think when I last talked about it, uh, it was in pretty rough shape. And it was purchased f uh, by someone who is having me uh, restore it. They have hired me to, to overhaul this machine. So it's not mine. Uh, it already belongs to someone, so it's not for sale. But I thought I'd make a video on my final testing of the machine. Uh, it is a very strong model. I believe this was made by the Brother Company. It's made in Japan. It says Windsor. It is very similar to machines that were sold by the Western Auto Chain, but it may have been sold by other, uh, other companies as well. and may have, in fact, been a department store called Windsor, for all I know. But anyway, this machine was in desperate need. It needed a new cord. The old cord was crumbled. Um, uh, and dry rotted, not safe to use. It needed a new belt. It needed a new foot pedal. So it has an electronic foot pedal. Uh, and, and then I took the machine and overhauled it, went through all of the different steps, removed this plate, got inside, uh, added grease to the control behind this uh, knob that you see here, this wonderful heavy chrome knob. And of course that stitch length uh, coming all, over, all the way over to the right is the um, the longest stitch. The machine has uh, feed dog drop. It has normal, which of course is up, silk, so you, it actually has two levels. It has a low level when you're working with delicate fabrics, as well as uh, you can drop them completely if you want to do darning, or they called it embroidery, but um, you can decide whether you believe <laughs> that a darning uh, is, is the same as embroidery, but I think it's kind of fun that people were willing to do embroidery techniques on sewing machines. They didn't have fancy embroidery machines. Anyway, we have, this machine comes with a built-in light uh, and everything checks out. Uh, all of the major pieces and sections were removed, cleaned, lubricated, uh, and now it is ready for its debut. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm not gonna use the, the uh, light bulb today and we'll see what it does. I'm going to have to adjust the tension. I haven't done any test sewing on it yet, so you guys get to watch me. Uh, whoops. Let's fix that, shall we? There we go. This, by the way, is the uh, reverse lever. I had it up uh, a while ago, uh, and now it is ready to sew. And it sews really fast. And we'll just go ahead and inspect the... Uh, Oh yeah, we'll go ahead and inspect the uh, the settings here and make sure everything is working as it should. And I'm going to come around. Let's see. I've got uh, my bottom bottom thread is a sort of turquoise color, and my top thread is kind of an off white. And I think I'm going to loosen my tension just a bit up top. And let's see what that does. Very quiet machine. Uh, I'm very pleased with how it's uh, how it's functioning. I'll, I'll I'll pull this out and show you all the stitches it's making. Many of you have multiple machines which is fantastic. Um, it might be uh, useful for some of you to, to have a dedicated straight stitcher like this. This, of course, is a clone. It's based on the Singer 15 class. Um, and just, boy, it really sews quickly. I'm gonna shorten the stitch length. And let's see what it kind of short stitch it makes. Oh yeah. Really pleased with this guy. Sometimes I have to do a little more tension adjusting when I'm testing this, but uh, didn't really have to today. Now let's see what we get here. On the first side, you're gonna see the stitches, and these are, this of course is the top thread. And then on the back, I've got all of this, this turquoise. You can see the very long, down here at the bottom, you'll see the very long, the longest stitch length. And then over here, you'll see where I started to get that really small, 
right where my thumb is, that really small short stitch. That's a pretty straight stitch. This is an oscillating hook machine. Um, and of course it has a lot more power. This is a fairly, I don't know, medium lightweight cotton. And that was just two layers there. Uh, I'll fold it over four and then I'll even fold it again. We'll do eight. And eight layers of this is not really going to, I don't think it's even gonna get this machine's attention. That's how, that's how, uh, how strong they are. Let's see. And I'll go back to, let's go back to the uh, long stitch. Oh yeah, this machine has got a lot of power. And I mean, you know, again, this is not a very dense fabric, but even if it was, I think you could sew webbing with this. Uh, for many of you, if you're looking for your first machine and you don't want to spend an awful lot, or maybe you, uh, you have multiple machines and you don't want to spend a lot, you can get one of these machines fairly inexpensively and uh, take, it, take it and do a restoration or practice a restoration on it. It's really a, a fantastic machine. Um, and uh, like I say, it uses Singer Class 15 bobbins. And uh, there's not much more to say about it other than uh, once it's restored and you've gotten it overhauled, you're ready to go. So again, uh, just basically the soft parts, uh, like the, um, like the cord and then the old foot pedal needed replacing and it's, it's ready for a whole new lifetime of sewing guys. So I appreciate you watching. I uh, just wanted to get this in there. This is one of those machines that I, that I work on for people. It's not mine. I didn't rescue the machine. Someone else did and brought it to me and said, what can you do? And anyway, I'll be uh, getting this back to them shortly, but wanted to get a little video in here for all of you beforehand. Anyway, thanks for watching the channel. If you have any ideas uh, or if you have uh, any comments to share about your own sewing machine, uh, maybe you have one of these uh, Japanese clones with one of the many, many names and emblems they were sold under. Uh, but feel free to put your comments there below and we'll see you in the next video.